So uh, relapsed refractory Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL is often driven by mutations in the ABL1 uh, gene. So uh, ABL1 kinase domain mutations. These particularly arise when patients are treated with first or second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors in the frontline setting. So for example, when patients receive some combination uh, chemotherapy with imatinib, disatinib, nilotinib, et cetera. Uh, some studies have suggested that up to 75% of patients will have um, a, uh, a mutation, and particularly T315I mutations. And these mutations uh, are mutations in ABL1 that confer resistance to all of the first and second generation TKIs, and is by far the dominant mechanism of relapse that we see when those uh, earlier generation TKIs are used. So this, is, uh, this uh, highlights the, the role of panatinib in these patients. So panatinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has activity against T315I mutations. Um, and so this is, a, I think, a very important place uh, for panatinib in the relapsed refractory setting. Now, how should we combine perhaps panatinib uh, with, uh, what other agents should we combine it with? Um, you could combine it, of course, with chemotherapy. We've seen very encouraging data combining uh, panatinib, for example, with blenitumumab, both in the frontline setting and in the relapsed refractory setting, where you can see very high rates of MRD negativity. Uh, so I think that this is a very uh, reasonable approach uh, chemotherapy-free combinations for patients with relapsed refractory Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL. Ideally with panatinib, even in the absence of T3N5I mutations, because it is in general, we consider it a better tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, and, and in combination with blinitumumab. Now, of course, you could also consider combining with inotuzumab, uh, although there's less data to support that. And of course, CAR T cells also remain an option for these patients.